At this point, I'm going to talk a little bit about tone and, and I mean, there's the visual element of how the wood looks and also the tone element. There's also weight. Weight's a big factor. I have some bass players come along and they say, I have lower back problems and I don't want a guitar that weighs any more than nine pounds. And um, so I, I sort of, as a big stew, I put all those uh, things together. I'll just comment on what, what we have right here as an example. Um, this is swamp ash back. It's a fairly lightweight wood. It, has a, it scoops the mids a little bit. So uh, it, it's going to accentuate the highs and the lows. I have a, a wenge tone layer. It's going to give you some guts and growl. This one happens to have a, a, a walnut top. Walnut is a little darker wood. There's a, little, a few less brights, but it's still a nice complex wood and, and can actually be really gutsy. So anyway, pretty lightweight, which is nice. Um, this neck is not so lightweight. It has bubinga. The outer rails are bubinga. The inner rail is wenge. Both of those are dense African woods. Uh, bubinga accentuates the mids. So it's a nice combination to use with swamp ash if you wa still want an even tone over the full spectrum of a guitar because it's going to give you a lot of sustain and a lot of mids. The wenge in the center gives you growl and clarity and a huge sound. It gives you a really big sound in the bass region. So um, let's see, this one, this one has a, um, an Indian rosewood fretboard, so that's going to give you a nice warm uh, tone. So when I, dis I talk with uh, players at first and I say, if you forgot completely about tone, what top wood is the kind of wood that you like visually? And if I can, I, I will give them the visual top that they're looking for, and then I'll use different configurations of wood to still get exactly the tone that they're looking for. And there are very specific players sometimes that want a certain specific thing, like certain ones. They'll say, I don't do any slapping and popping. I just play finger style, or I play funk half the time and I have I play jazz the other half the time but many players are playing rock jazz funk and, and a whole range and so I'm trying to build a bass with all the controls that will really uh, cover a big broad uh, section of usable tone um, I even get into the preamps uh, like if a person does a lot of funk and they want an aggressive gritty sound I'll probably go with an Aguilar OBP3 preamp if I get to a six or seven string bass where they're going to be doing a lot of chord comping, playing up the, the scale a lot, and they want real bell clarity, I'll go to a Nordstrand, which is a little more musical, but won't give you quite as gritty of a sound if you do a lot of slapping and popping. So by listening to the visual preferences of a player and also the kind of genres they're going to be playing, you can, I can start to get a picture of what kind of woods are going to be the right woods to put together for, for that particular base. Pretty quickly, I'm going to go down on the floor and drop pieces of wood and show you. It's kind of shocking how different all these kinds of wood sound. And what I tend to do is, other than those two preamp changes, I keep the electronics, my, my take on it is, I keep the electronics fairly consistent and I'm changing the wood to get the different tones. Uh, if you change the electronics and change the wood and you're constantly changing everything, at some point it gets a little hard to know, okay, that one really sounds great and this one doesn't sound as good, why is that? By, by really focusing on the wood changes and keeping the electronics kind of consistent, I can pretty much predict what I'm gonna get from each bass. And I'm wrong once in a while, but for the most part, I'm, I, I've gotten enough experience to pretty well know what, what I'm gonna get. So it's time for a little musical uh, tone wood demonstration. And I've gone through this sort of thing a lot to, to test out and really get a good idea of what, which woods sound like what. What I'm gonna do is start with Buckeye Burrow, which is a pretty soft and relatively dead wood and work my way up to swamp ash and on up to the hardest, hardest woods. And you'll hear that the pitch, the loudness of the wood keeps increasing and the pitch uh, keeps increasing as well. So here we go. Here is uh, Buckeye Burrow, swamp ash, bird's eye maple, walnut. Another piece of walnut. 
very different. Koa, Kokobolo, Bubinga, uh, Pao Ferro, Wenge, Ebony. Here's a different kind of Wenge. It's darker and more and brighter. And Xeracote. You could almost make music with those. <laughs>